In this video, I'm going to show you how you can visualize your variants into something like this in Power BI, where you're able to see the previous months and the current months in a bar chart like this. You're able to select what the current month is, as well as show the variance with a, a line like this, along with some color showing you if that change is positive or negative. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So here's another visual technique that I got from Gustav Dudek's LinkedIn page, and it's one of his many techniques in how you can kind of maximize the use of the out-of-the-box visuals that Power BI provides to you. So if you want to see more of what the Power BI visuals are capable of and more, I suggest that you follow his LinkedIn page, which I will leave a link to in the description box below. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from the very beginning here in this new Power BI report that I've created so that you can see how you can build it yourself from scratch. Introduce you to this uh, data model that I have here. It's the Northwind datasets, which is a company that sells uh, grocery goods internationally. I've only imported a few of the tables from this Northwind dataset. So we have the sales at the moment here already visualized in months from my calendar table. So I have measure here that calculates the sales from the order details, just multiplying the unit price against the quantity. We have a few other tables here as well, like the calendar table showing the dates and the months for our current range, the categories of the products that, that the company sell, the order details, as I mentioned before, has the quantity and unit price for calculating sales. We have the orders table, which is the list of the orders and when they were ordered as well as the product names. I've already also prepared the model at the back, so all of the relationships. So we're not going to go through too much on this relationship today because it's uh, the demo is more towards the visual itself. So before we start writing our DAX measures, we need to set up a few things. So the first thing that we need to set up is we need to create this table, which we will have the current and the previous rows on. And this is what we're going to use in our kind of bar chart visual later on. I'm going to do that by going to insert, or where is it? Enter data. I'm just going to name this one comparison. Name the column also comparison. We'll have just two or three values here. So previous, current, and the important one is empty one call just blank. And the reason why it's blank is because we need space for the variance, which we're going to show later, which is where the percentage value is the, of what we want to show. So it's going to be a hidden bar. I mean, I'm going to show you how you can utilize it later. For now, we're going to load this into our model and we will have an extra table now here on the right hand side. Next thing is uh, we're going to create a new measure here called previous month sales. We're going to reuse it a little bit later. So I'm going to name it sales PM. And if you're, if you've been around Power BI, you know already how easy this is. So it's going to be just the sales. And then in the filter expression, we're just going to use previous month and then use the calendar date column. See our sales previous month. We also need to duplicate this for something else later. So I think I'm just going to start doing that now. I'm just going to name it sales PM2. And then it's just going to be the same measure. So just referencing the sales previous month. So now let's actually let's create a new visual here. I'm going to use a combo chart. And that's because we want to use the line chart later for the visual part of the variance. For now, we're going to focus on just the bars. So we're going to add the comparison in our X axis. Now there's nothing there yet. I mean, that's because we need to add the sales or whatever the values are for what is selected in kind of what, what we have selected. So we'll just start by adding the filter slicer on the top first. We're going to change the settings to be a tile. Something like this, so that your users are able to select the months that they want to analyze. So that works. And then now we're going to create a new measure, which is the one that applies the values in the comparison chart. So we're just going to name this one compared value. And then we're going to say if the selected 
value of the comparison is equals to current, then give me the sales value. Otherwise, give me the sales for the previous month. So this measure is what we will use here in our comparison combo charts. So under the Y axis, we're going to add this compared value. And there you go. So now, because we have selected January 1998, it's giving me 100,000 pounds, which is the same as what that value is, as well as the previous month. So now we're going to just organize this a little bit. So we're going to sort this by comparison. Yeah, like this. And then this blank one. So we're going to just, let's just do a bit of formatting here. Okay. So we're going to change the column. So show all, and then we'll just change these colors. So the previous would be a lighter version of what we have on the current, something like this. And then the default color, which is the blank one, we'll just make that the same color as the background. We'll hide the grid line so that it's not so obvious. But why we're hiding that is because we are trying to create space for the variance that we are going to show later, which is comparing the current against the previous bar chart right here. So now we need to add a few more things here in our bar chart. So we're going to add on the line Y axis, a few things. We'll add the sales, we'll add the sales previous month and sales previous months too. So these lines are what will be the reference lines, which we will use for our comparisons later. So we're just going to convert them into something that looks more like a reference line. We're going to change them all into stroke width one. Their color should be all the same. So we'll make them gray, whichever one, as long as they're the same. And then make the line dashed. So you're probably wondering why we have three in this line Y axis. And that's because we want to try to show if the change is an increase or decrease. So we need two points there. We need two points in our error bars so that we can define which error bars is positive or negative. It sounds a little bit confusing for now, but just just bear this in mind while we kind of build this solution for now. So the next thing is we're going to create the upper bound and lower bound for the error bars. And this is what will define what the, the starting and ending point. And this will define if that label is going to be shown or not. Yeah. So, so for now, just follow what I'm going to do here. So upper bound is going to be an if statement again. So we're going to check if the selected value is if it's blank and the sales is greater than sales previous month then give me like this, give me sales. Otherwise don't give me anything. So the real one that we need is this one. So it checks if it's greater than the previous month. So we want to show the sales value there. Otherwise basically be blank. The second part of the if statement here is to make sure that this label is only showing up in this category that we have here that is blank. So we don't really want to show that on any other bar apart from this blank area here. So that's what we are doing here in this if statement. So I think that's done. So I'm just going to hit enter. I'm, I just copied the measure. So that I can repeat it because we need this for the lower bound as well. And what we'll just change here is just swap this one. And then that's it. So now what we're going to do is go to the format settings here and then just go to the error bars, wherever they are. Where are they? Ah, here at the bottom. So we're going to go to the sales PM. So we need the sales PM and sales PM too. So this is where we will have the error bars or wh where we want to show the positive or negative. We're going to choose the first one and we're going to define this to be a positive change. We're going to hit enabled here. And then we're going to add an upper bound here, which will be just the upper bound that we've just created. So you'll see that it creates a line there and it only creates that line in this category, the blank category, because that's what we've set the if statement to do. So from here, we're just going to adjust this bar a little bit. So maybe change the border style don't like that. We'll change the bar color into green because that's what a positive value means because it's an increase in the previous. We're going to change the marker style to be like an arrow like that. And then I think we can enable error labels. And then we're just going to change those labels as well. So that to be green, background color also green. And uh, we're going to adjust what is being shown there in a little bit because 
there we basically want to show a percentage or you might want to show a percentage change instead of the current value of the current. So, but for now we're going to enable the error labels and we're going to adjust that later. So the next thing is just do the opposite or same thing, but for the negative changes. So we'll choose the sales PM2 in our error bars here, enable it, and then we're going to choose lower bound, choose lower bound on that side. So I'm just going to change the periods here so that we can preview what we're working with. So again, we're going to go to the bar, change that into red, marker shape into an arrow, remove the border size, and then add the error labels, change the colors to red. And there you go. So the next thing that we want to show then, as I mentioned, is to show the variance or the change in percentage into this labels instead of the current value. So we're going to create another measure here, going to be a simple one, variance. And then we're just going to simply calculate that variance. So it's going to be sales minus sales PM divided by sales PM. So that should be it. We're creating it in a measure separately because we want to reference that in a separate calculation. So the last thing is to change the format of our sales PM and sales PM2 into this dynamic type. So this is how we're able to be then change the, the labels on these error bar labels. So we're going to do that by creating a selecting sales PM, change the format to dynamic. It will error out at first, which is fine because we're going to fix that in a second. I'm going to use four of these double quotes just so that we can override the dynamic format rules. And then we're just going to say, give me the format of the variance. And what I want here, 0.0, .0 percentage, which I think that should be okay. And then I'm going to add an up arrow. So no need to worry about the rules here because because we've created two measures we can create another version of this but for the negative change so the sales pm we know is a percentage increase sales pm2 change the dynamic format i've already copied the previous one so i'm going to paste that and just simply change the arrow to go downwards enter and there you have it. So you now have, as you can see here, I'm going to just delete this one. As you change the context, the month context, it gives you the value in that current month. It shows you the value for the previous month, and it easily shows you what that percentage difference is if it's increasing or decreasing. And what's great about this visual is you can add some more things here, like for example, adding category. So you can pick and choose which category you'd like to see here. So if you want to see, like, let's say just beverages or different categories, it does the comparison for you. And what's even, even cooler is if you change this and add small multiples, if you want to see the month on month change, you can change and add small multiples here based on month, or you can just add an, uh, a category here in the small multiples. So you can see what that change looks like for those different categories. Now the colors might have just defaulted to those colors. So you might just need to just update those. So just make that one white, current to be blue, and then previous to be slightly colored, lightly colored blue. So here you go. So you can see all of your, all of your categories, the percentage change month on month quite easily. And that's it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to visualize something like this, where you're easily able to change the current month, see the previous month and see the change in percentage between those two periods. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so let's do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.